Was that too much? Meh. What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. If you thought I was done with desk setup videos for this year, well, so did I. But I couldn't keep my hands off of the desk setup that we had in our master bedroom. Hence the title of this video. It says master. I think I titled it master something. I don't know. Well, I, I just couldn't keep my hands off of this desk setup that my wife had in our bedroom. And while I have my own suite setup, her desk kind of had no function to it. So in today's video, I'm going to take you through how we did a complete makeover of her desk. And it's a long one, so let's just go ahead and get into it. While Krupa's corner over here works perfectly well for most people, it had a few issues I just couldn't overlook. For one, we never use it. That's kind of a red flag. But from a build perspective, the chair may look nice, but it's constantly having bolts come loose and it doesn't have the best back support. Also, the desk over here, while the shot doesn't really show it well, the legs keep tapering in like it's ready to implode any day. So with this makeover, I wanted to get us started with a blank slate by moving everything out. For the desk, we chose to go with a standing desk from FlexiSpot. Outside of having the ability of converting the desk from city mode to standing mode, one of the nice perks for us is that with myself being six foot three and Krupa being five foot two and a half, it's nice to tailor the desk height for even when we're sitting. We chose to go with the white base with bamboo top, I kind of wanted this setup to be relaxing and cozy yet productive. I also wanted it to be night and day difference from a visual perspective of my office as my office has more darker tones. Assembling this desk was fairly simple, minus the time I decided to skip one of the instructions and also the time that I installed one of the parts a little too far away from where it needed to plug in at. In my defense, the instructions for that portion weren't super clear. Here it is. Here's the moment I realized I was just a tad bit too far away. The desk also includes a bunch of clip ties, so I suggest using those so that you don't have all the wires drooping down. Once all was assembled, I was able to test it out and then adjust the height settings to our preference for sitting versus standing so that we don't have to manually adjust it every single time. Next up, I finally got to replace the chair. If you feel you're going to spend a ton of time at your desk, I highly recommend investing in a decent chair. The chair that we went with is the Ergo Chair Pro Plus from Autonomous. It's not the cheapest option out there, but it's roughly a third of the price of some of the other options you'll see. Thank you. 
The assembly process for this one is pretty straightforward with the hardest part probably being just attaching the wheels. Other than that, it takes very minimal amount of time. We went with the TPE backing version as for some reason our upstairs area gets pretty hot during the day. So it's nice to have an option that keeps you cool. But the main reason we got this chair was because of the back support. On top of that, it actually looks pretty sweet. So that's kind of a perk. The autonomous chair was not the only one we added though. Krupa likes to read way more than I do. So we wanted a nice corner to relax in. We actually took a risk on this chair. We found it on Amazon, it looked awesome and super comfortable, but it only had two reviews and we've also never ordered furniture like this off of Amazon. Luckily it actually arrived pretty quick and we were not disappointed. This is probably one of my favorite chairs in the house now and I didn't realize it, but it's actually made with memory foam so to say it's comfortable is an understatement. The only thing that they really need to include with this is potentially a footrest or ottoman. Other than that we love everything about it. The monitor that we went with with this setup is LG's newest 32 inch 4K smart monitor, the 32SQ780S. Visually this monitor was a perfect fit for this setup as we wanted it to be as clean and minimal as possible. What I love is that LG actually includes a perfect match monitor ergo stand that works great at quickly and easily adjusting the height and position. This is ideal for us because as I mentioned earlier we have a little bit of a height difference. Another nice thing is that it also makes it extremely easy to switch to a vertical mode in case I ever want to add a second monitor or use it in unison with our MacBook. I plan to do a full review on this monitor in the future, but to give you a quick preview of it, this monitor is a 32 inch 60 hertz 4K display. What makes this monitor stand out is that it's also a smart monitor. What I mean by smart monitor is that we can use it without having to connect it to a PC as it's equipped with the latest web OS similar to what you would see with a smart TV. So if we don't feel like connecting the laptop back in and booting it up, we can easily access streaming services such as Netflix, Prime Video, Disney+, Apple TV, and of course, Dexter's favorite, YouTube. I'm hoping that we continue this trend of seeing more and more smart monitors on the market as well as companies including a remote. If you are interested in learning more about this monitor, be sure to subscribe to my channel as I'll do a full review here in the next few weeks. As a little wedding present, our friends at Grovemade hooked us up with three perfect additions to the desk. First off, to help control some of the clutter that will be added to the setup over time, we got a medium sized matte white desk shelf. A little pro tip, if you're ever considering a desk shelf, whether it be Grovemade or somewhere else, always check the dimensions and measure it out. I really wanted the large shelf, but it honestly would have overtaken the space if we did. Next up, to save some space, we got the Maple MacBook Dock. 
This allows us to set the laptop up vertically in clamshell mode and easily plug in any cables that we need to. And finally, the last addition from GrubMade was the wool felt desk pad. No matter what, I really feel that all desk setups should have some sort of desk pad or at the very least a mouse pad. One of the nice perks of getting a wool desk pad is that if your space gets cold during the winter, the wool actually kind of helps to warm the area up once you get settled in. To help make cable management easier to deal with, I got the two-pack white cable management trays from Vivo. It's a very simple and clean design that uses two screws each for installation. But to be honest, I do kind of wish they would make the design a little easier to install. The bamboo top from FlexiSpot is pretty solid quality compared to some of the options you might find at IKEA. So I recommend using a drill bit first as the screws Vivo typically includes can struggle with installation. Just make sure that you don't drill all the way through, so a pro tip is to use a piece of tape as a marker for when you need to stop. While I don't really show it much here, I also used a few other clips and velcro strips to fasten everything to the top and avoid unnecessary hanging cables. To help with cable management as well, I got this surge protector power strip and screwed it in near the trays. This one's actually pretty nice just because it has different ways to plug everything in along with additional USB ports to avoid having to buy extra charger blocks. All right, let's get into some of the tech that I've added. I wanted to try out a budget mouse this time since I already used the MX Master 3 mouse. So for this setup, I went with Logitech's G305 as it was on sale for $39 when I bought it and it honestly didn't disappoint. It's very lightweight, has six programmable buttons, it's extremely responsive, and it looks super clean. If I had to be picky, the only two areas I'd love to see improvement would be implementing a rechargeable battery and possibly improving the scroll wheel. Other than that, for $40, this mouse was perfect for this setup. I also paired it up with my Delta Hub wrist rest as it still feels weird not using it nowadays. For the keyboard, I'm currently testing out a few others right now, so I decided to move my MX Mechanical Keyboard with tactile switches over to this setup. It's a pretty nice keyboard with great reviews online, but I wish the keycaps were made of a different material. It's also slightly higher in price than I'd like it to be. Personally, I still love using my original MX Keys keyboard that is right around $60 to $70 less than this one. Next up is actually one of my favorite new additions that I carry around with me to work in between these two desk setups at our house, and it's the Zen Slabs Quick Keys. I love this thing especially because of the wheel. It's wireless, rechargeable, and fully customizable based on what program I'm in. I use Premiere Pro primarily and love to easily rotate to specific cut sections of each clip. One thing that I'd like to maybe see is making the shortcut keys more similar to a keyboard. Other than that, this is one of those accessories that makes an awesome gift for people that are big into desk setups. I still have the Toby Nunn docking station for my first setup video and it still works great. I believe they have a newer version now that only requires one USB-C cable to be plugged in rather than how this version requires two, so I'd suggest that one or a CalDigit option as well. Another item I'm testing out to make smart products easier for both of us to use is the smart buttons from Flick. I'm using these in my other office setup to easily turn off all my RGB lights, but in here I mainly use it as an easy way of playing and pausing music when it's played on our Amazon speakers. That said, there's a ton of ways to use these that I plan to cover more in future videos. 
The last piece of tech we added is one of my favorites from a design and usage perspective, the BenQ e-reading lamp. Once unboxed, it's super easy to put together. We love this because we mainly use it to light up the desk at night, but also we can rotate it and use it for Krupa whenever she wants to read books at the chair. The lamp's curved design also helps to light up a wider area than a lot of other standard desk lamps that you'll see. The lamp has a screen mode where we can adjust the light to be above our monitor in place of a standard monitor light. And there's also a reading mode for when she wants to read at the chair or at the desk. Both modes are pre-programmed and can be activated by holding down on the metal circle on top for about two seconds. The knob on top allows us to adjust the brightness and temperature for our personal preferences as well. Outside of how it can be used, the design of the lamp is just overall super clean and really helps this setup stand out. In my dream office setup, you may remember the board and batten wall that I did. Well, I wanted something like that to be tied into this setup without it being as dramatic. So for this, I decided to make a custom three-piece art set using wood, stain, and paint. Each piece is approximately two foot by two foot where I use thin trim pieces and then finally frame it up. To minimize the amount of patchwork, I attached all the thin strips using CA glue Initially, I used Activator as well, but it sets up extremely quick, leaving little to no room for error. So I decided to just stick with the CA glue. I wanted to keep the design simple and base it off my board and batten wall. I may make a full tutorial on this if anyone is interested, but the general design is only 45 and 90 degree cuts, which makes it all easy. For the trim, I used a poplar wood and wanted to try to whitewash stain it. It took one coat of stain, but I wanted it to have more of a natural wood color than have the white over bare the look. So I ended up using 80 grit sandpaper to bring back some of the uh, poplar's natural color. For the paint color, I went with a matte farmhouse white where I applied two coats to each piece. Somehow it worked out to where I used exactly one can of spray paint. To attach the art pieces, I used wood glue and one and a half inch brad nails. To finalize each piece, I attach one hook to the back side directly in the middle towards the top.
I'm really OCD about hanging pieces like this on our walls, so here's a time lapse of what the process looked like. I tried out several methods to ensure that it was as closely centered and perfectly spaced as possible. My favorite pro tip for hanging something like this that only has one hook is I'll use a level and then I'll add some Loctite mounting tabs at the bottom of each piece to keep it in place without destroying the wall. The final touch to the entire setup was adding a little greenery. So I got a piece of lily plant along with a wooden base so that we could place it by the chair without it directly being on the ground. I think we should also add something behind the chair, but honestly plants aren't my specialty, so if you have any suggestions, please let us know down in the comments. Alright, well there you have it. That about wraps up this desk setup's master makeover. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. If you did, please like and subscribe down below and let me know what you all thought. Links to everything shown today will be down in the description. I'll also be working on a couple more videos here soon, so until then, I'll see you all next time.